quantum computing. Now, I heard one astrophysicist during her TED talk uh, use this metaphor that traditional computing is like a candle and quantum computing is like a light bulb. And no matter how many candles you have, you will not make a light bulb out of them. So it doesn't matter how many traditional computers ha you have, you will not make them a quantum computer. Do you agree with it? And what the hell is quantum computing anyways? Well, the idea behind uh, the quote you just mentioned is that quantum computer is a completely different paradigm yes. of computing, right? So that's the idea. No matter how many classical computers you have, it's not the same as quantum computing. The other point is quantum computing, you know, you, you can't even compare the two, right? Because first of all, quantum computing is, as I said, a completely new paradigm, completely new way of computing, a completely different system. And second of all, um, they are not fit for same types of problems, right? And that's the point where, uh, where we start talking about why quantum computing is even useful, right? Because you have your classical computers, you can do many stuff with them, right? You can uh, use it to build the internet, to, to build, you know, uh, image on a screen, to, uh, to run, uh, you know, software, to play video games and so on. That's all the domain of classical computers. And the classical computer is very good at those tasks, right? And then there are some problems that classical computers just can't solve. Right? And those are typically the very memory um, intensive, uh, very heavy computational problems. One example of such a problem would be um, uh, simulations in science, right? where you need to, let's say you have a molecule and you want to understand how that molecule interacts. Um, and typically people build large supercomputers and use all that capacity to run these kinds of simulations and we can't get very far. The most we can do is a molecule with a few atoms, right? And, and, you know, ahead of that, you have no way of running it on a classical computer simply because the computation is too difficult, right? And quantum computers, they promise a huge improvement in some of these algorithms. Now, when you ask what a quantum computer is, it is basically a device that uses a quantum mechanical system that is in it and performs uh, some specific calculation tasks in a very, very faster, um, in very much faster than a classical computer. Could you give some more examples of uh, quantum computer or quantum computing applica applications and how it could transform uh, certain industries because I don't really think of my private life. It's not like I'm going to use quantum computer. It's not like I'm going to ever own one, but it's not like I'm going to use it for gaming, right? No, no, you're not. So, <clears throat> for example, you know, let's say fertilizer. Okay. 2% of world's energy today is used to produce fertilizer. 2% of the entire energy in the world. On the other hand, you have bacteria that do it all the time and they do it for free, right? When, when you, you make a compost, you know, bacteria degrade that, make a rich soil, make fertilizer, right? We have no idea how they do that. For example, if we could simulate that chemical process, we would understand how this unfolds and we could, you know, we could use it to produce fertilizer um, without wasting so much energy. Then you have, as I said, um, simulations in science that involve material design, right? Where you want to design a material that has specific properties. That involves simulating these, uh, you know, constituents of the material to see how, how it behaves in different conditions, right? If you want to understand how something works, then you need to simulate all the possibilities of that system. For example, if you have a molecule, you will simulate all the electron interactions, how it bonds with other, with other molecules, what the energy states are, right? Then, for example, if we move outside of science, right, you have also industry applications. One example is optimization problems. 
typically optimization problems involve running many, many, many configurations until you find the optimal one. Mm -hmm. And that's also an example of exponentially large problem. Um, when, by exponentially large, I mean when you increase the of scope of the problem, right, the number of variables, the complexity of the computation just explodes. Right? Uh, in finance, for example, that's also uh, a, a very applicable use case. Um, for example, for portfolio optimization, for risk analysis, right, for asset allocation, stuff like that. Uh, then machine learning. Uh, some of the machine learning al algorithms, you probably know that you know training a machine learning uh, classifier involves crunching a lot of data. You need a lot of training, right, in order to to get the uh, to get the model. That's also one possible application of a quantum computer. So basically, we're talking about a very narrow scope of these heavy computational problems. We're not talking about the things where classical computers are good, right? We're talking about the things where you can have all the supercomputers in the world and you still can solve one problem. Okay, so tell me more about IBM's plan for quantum computing. Tell me, what, tell me more about IBM Q System 1 and IBM Q Experience. Okay, so IBM Q Experience, um, it was launched in 2016. And the idea is we have put the access to the quantum computer, to the real quantum computer on the cloud. Now, there are several motivations for this. One is to educate people, right? As we said, operating, building, and programming a quantum computer involves a completely different skill set than a regular computer. So that's why it's important to learn about it and to educate the people ahead of time, right? So to be prepared for, you know, applications when the technology actually becomes more powerful than, than the classical computers. Um, another motivation is, you know, by publishing this, we have shown to the world it is possible. We have done it. You can see all the parameters of the quantum computer. You can see how much noise it has, uh, what kind of coherence it has, right? Um, and IBM was, you know, the first to do that, um, to to prove that this is actually operating uh, system. So I could use it. Like, is it publicly accessible? Yeah, IBM Q experience is publicly publicly accessible. Uh, you even have um, some user guides there that help you, you know, get acquainted with, uh, with some of the concepts and get you started. You can build some simple programming, some simple algorithms there, right? Mm. If you Google IBM Q, uh, you'll get to the IBM research page where you have all that. So, so yeah. Is there a long-term strategy? I, I believe there is, and I hope you can reveal something behind IBM's uh, quantum computing program? Yeah, for example, what, what I do, um, I'm a IBM Q ambassador, right? And IBM Q ambassador uh, is a role that was established worldwide. And we are working on the side of the ecosystem, right? So one thing is research and development of the technology, right? The other thing is preparing the ecosystem, you know, talking to businesses, talking to academic institutions, Right, so so that's our mission uh, right now, right? Um, IBM launched uh, this thing called IBM Q Network, and the mission of IBM Q Network is first to educate people, right? Second, to accelerate research, right? By partnering with academic institutions that are also involved in in the same domain, and third is to start thinking about commercial applications. So we also partner with, um, with industry uh, leaders that want to explore the possibilities and use cases of applying quantum computers in their respective industries. And as a physicist, do you have any dream or big idea of how to use quantum computing in future? Uh, something that no one's ever thought of. <laughs> Maybe something with social impact. Um, but not necessarily. I mean, I like the I like very much the social impact. Um, 
for me personally, you know, I want to strive to do business that actually has a positive impact on the, you know, society and nature and not just making money, right? So there are a lot of cases where quantum compu computing could help, you know, the optimization uh, area, for example, is definitely one of them. Um, you know, by, by optimizing use of resources and so on. Uh, the example I gave at the beginning, right, where 2% of world's energy is being used, right? We could, we could impact, you know, how we use our resources, how we use uh, energy, how we allocate um, uh, resources, right? So all of those are, are interesting use cases. Also the advancement in science, right? By designing uh, better materials, by, by you know, um, designing better, you know, maybe medications, by, or stuff even we, we don't even know yet, maybe, you know? By understanding things, you open up the doors to, to new uses, right? Um, so I believe that a lot of things will pop up as we develop the technology and as we, um, you know, start exploring the possibilities. So let's settle this once and for all. I will most likely never own a quantum computer. <clears throat> I mean, if you become very rich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's a goal. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, definitely, yeah. Um, that's not the best case for a quantum computer, if you can say that. So you will, you will very likely never have a quantum computer in your pocket or in your home. But you don't even have to, right? Once I have it, have... the main question that I will have will be, what do I do with it? <laughs> yeah, you would be very cold, probably, because the system needs near zero Kelvin <laughs> temperature to operate, right? So your leg would freeze, probably, if you had it in your pocket. But you know, we have the internet today, so even for accessing, you know, storage and computing power, you know, you probably use, you probably use, you know, Google Photos or uh, Dropbox or whatever, you know, that's all the same concept. You, you don't have the things on your phone or on your computer, you use a data center somewhere else, right? So we do it today and it will be the same story with quantum computers. So IBM will share have... it with me. Sorry? IBM will share it with me in future. In a way. Um, maybe. Okay. Yeah, so the idea is that there will be quantum computing centers, right? And through the cloud, through internet, you can connect to them and post these, you know, computing challenges to the quantum computer. So there's really no need to have it in your home, sure. really. <laughs>